Well, good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? Welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Tanisha. I have a great topic for us to discuss today, and it is very simple. How to deliver a flawless edification. So can anyone tell me what actually is an edification? This is a list of your accomplish mm -hmm. and who you are. Exactly. It's basically introducing someone, but you're sharing their list of accomplishments. Because when you think about the three-way call, let's say you have a prospect and you're going to introduce them to your expert. Well, your prospect does not know the expert from a can of paint. <laughs> right? So they don't trust them. They don't know them, right? They might already be a little sketchy about the business opportunity. And now you about to put them on the phone with someone they don't know. And so to, to put their uh, defense mechanisms down, you need to edify the expert and share their accomplishments in the business so that your prospect feels comfortable with them and knows that they are qualified to talk to them about the business on your behalf. So you, you have got to nail that edification. It is the most important part of the three-way call. Director White, you wanna speak on how important is the edification as part of the three-way call when doing the PS3? Absolutely. Um, so it is very important because like you said, uh, especially, like for your family, friends, you know, people who know, love and trust you, when you're putting somebody else on the phone, I remember when I first started and I first started doing three ways and I was getting one of my girlfriends on the phone with director Rayleigh and maybe I did not edify her properly because I had just started, but literally my friend started screaming at the top of her lungs like, no, no, no. I'm like, what's going on? She's like, I don't want to talk to nobody else. I want to talk to you. I trust you. You don't have to get anybody else on the phone, you know, and I never completed that three-way with her. And to this day, she's still not in this business. And maybe I should actually follow up with her, but it is very important, um, that edification piece. And, you know, not just in this business and any business and any arena, once you learn how to edify someone, you can do it at all times. And like Director Burke said, without knowing anything about a person, you'll be able to edify them once you master that. Absolutely, absolutely. And I love what Director White said, how she shared, it was her friend. So it's even more important that you do the three-way call and edify the expert when it's your family and friends. Even more important, because like she said, they'll, they'll feel like, Oh, but, you know, I just want to talk to you because I know you. Well, you brand new in the business. You don't know anything, <laughs> right? But they don't know what they don't know, right? They don't, and, and they're not thinking, oh, this is a business decision that I need to make. Maybe I should speak to someone who's been in the business for a long time and has some success and can, you know, educate me on the business. They're looking at it. Oh, no, that's my friend. I only want to hear from them. Well, guess what? Your friend doesn't know anything. Your friend is not documented in the business. So they can't really help you make this business decision. You want to make an informed business decision. Now, before we get into the edification, what you also need to know are the colors. How many of you, and I want y'all to be honest, how many of you have not, and I want you to just type guilty in the chat, and be honest, how many of you have not watched the colors training by JP Watkins that's in the back office? Be honest. Just type guilty in the chat. How many of you have not watched? Thank you, Shawnee. Anybody else? Okay, Ms. Phillips, thank you. Delta, thank you. Thank you for being honest because Lying ain't gonna help you, <laughs> right? Like you ain't hurting nobody but yourself by lying. So we, we have to, we're gonna do business. We gotta be transparent, yes? We gotta be transparent with each other if we're gonna do business, right? Um, so 
For those of you who have not watched the colors training by JP Watkins that's in your back office, please do that today. Write that down as a homework assignment because that's probably one of the reasons why you're also struggling to do the edification. You need to know the colors training. Now, basically in short with the colors training, Everyone has a predominant color and the color basically um, is associated with a specific characteristic. So who wants to share what the colors are? Who knows what the characteristic is for yellow? I know, this Sharice. Hey Sharice. Yellow, uh, they like to help people. Excellent, excellent. Y'all write that down. Yellows love to help people. Yellows love to help people. Who are your yellows? Your nurses, your evangelists, evangelists, people who own a, a 5013C, a nonprofit, are typically mm -hmm. going to be your yellows. So make a note of that because that's going to help you. Yellows love to help people. And they're typically in, you know, your firefighters, um, you know, um, anybody who does some type of volunteer work, those are going to be your yellows. Teachers. Teachers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody else? What, what type of people are yellows? Can you name some yellows? Um, would police officer be yellow or no? Some, yeah, because that, that is a service position. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. First responders, philanthropists, social workers, absolutely. Y'all write those down. You need to know that these are the type of people that are typically yellows. So one of the things you need to know about yellows, they hate sales. So if you start talking to them about selling, recruiting, making money, you're going to turn them off. Okay, uh, leasing agents, mm, could be. Psychiatrists. Psychiatrists, yes. Yep, any, any, any type of industry where they are of service to others. Those people are typically going to be yellows, all right? What about, what about cashiers? Mm, not necessarily, that's, it's a job. They got to do it. If, if right. I wanted to be of service, um, if I have a heart for serving people, cashier is not really going to be in my top list of things to do right. necessarily. Some, some things are just jobs that happen to be in the service industry. But when I, when I, when you talk about a profession, like first responders, like you're really, you're ready to put your life down to help others. It's totally different. All right. What about daycare worker? Could be. Some of them may be yellows. Some of them may be yellows. But, you know, a lot of, you could also make the, um, the argument that a lot of people start daycares because they have kids and they can't afford daycare for themselves. So they start one <laughs> in their home for their own kids. So that's not necess necessarily, you know, they're doing it to be of service. So no, some things are just jobs, but yeah, healthcare workers, correct, Director White, absolutely. Let's talk about blues. What are some of the characteristics of a blue? Love blues that have fun. Me have fun. Wait, one at a time, one at a time. Blues love to have fun. <laughs> there you go. Blues love to have fun. Y'all write that down. Blues love to have fun. So what are some professions that a blue would be drawn to? Event planners. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Anybody in the entertainment um, industry. Yep, yep. You're you're better any, in your entertainment. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Party people, yeah. Ooh, Director uh, White, you said the DJ. Yes, yes, absolutely. Anybody else? What are some professions that a blue would be drawn to? I'm, is, I'm, I'm taking a stab at it. Uh, travel agents. 
could be. It could be. And, and I'll tell you why it could be. Because as a travel advisor, you could put on group trips and your part, you make sure you're on the group trip. You're not just booking it and sending people. You're like, I'm going with. Okay. So okay. your group, your group bookers who go on all the trips, <laughs> they're blues. Right. <laughs> they are definitely blues for sure. <laughs> Director Short <laughs> said, hey, everyone, I'm a blue, right? So blues love to have fun. Um, they, if you talk to a blue about statistics and percentages, they don't want to hear that. The facts and the figures, they don't want to hear that. All they want to know is where's the party at? And they were at the birds. Yes. So Mr. my background is accounting and um, compliance, and I love numbers. Like mm-hmm. I, it's 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 crazy, but it's true. So I I know that a lot of statistics shows that a blue property would not like that. But getting down to me is fun just trying to get to zeros. Right. That means you're a green, mm. not a blue, which is the next color we were going to talk about. Greens. What are the characteristics of greens? Analytical. Thank you. Greens are analytical. Pay attention to detail. They pay attention to detail. Yes. They're organized. Yes. Greens are very organized. Love processes. They love processes. Greens have lots of highlighters of all different colors. They got notepads and sticky pads. They got a a notebook for every subject. Those are your greens. Facts and figures. And as Director White just shared, some of the professions that a green would be in, accountants, data analysts, IT, engineers, those are going to be your greens. So if you are talking to a green about how having fun in this, you know, this business is so much fun, they're not interested in that. You're going to turn them off. They're going to be like, I I ain't here to have fun. Mm -mm. Tell me how many people are in the top one, you know, top income earners. What is the percentage of people who start and quit? What is the percentage of people who actually make six figures in this business? How much travel have you booked? The, what, what is the BBB saying about your company? Those are going to be your greens, right? And so you, you need to know that. So when you're talking to a green, you ain't talking about the wrong thing. Because if you talk to the green about how in this business, they're going to be able to help people. They don't care about that. That's not what they're here for. They want to know the facts, the figures, all right? So would an underwriter be considered a green? Yes. I would say underwriters would fall on green. Mm-hmm. Okay, again, yeah, that's my regular profession. What'd you say? I said that's my regular profession. I'm an underwriter for a real estate agent, so we pay a lot to- attention to details and stuff like that. Exactly, exactly. So the next color, reds. What are the characteristics of a red? Money motivated, Ebony said, correct. Reds are money motivated. So what type of professions would reds be drawn to? Bankers. Would you say, Debbie? Bankers. Bankers. Okay. Real, real Army. Estate military. Real estate agents. Investors. Definitely investors. Stock market. Yes. Okay. Army. My yes. sister's a I nurse. Know about the army. A nurse. Nurses are typically not red at all. Well, my sister's a nurse and she's red, definitely red. Yeah, they're typically, it is not to say, let me say this as a whole. Everyone 
has all the colors in them. We're all rainbow. We all have red, yellow, blue, and green in us. However, there is a dominant color. So although your sister is a nurse, if she didn't like, even if she was money motivated, if she didn't like helping people, she wouldn't, she would hate being a nurse. So her dominant color is yellow to be in nursing. Cause that is, you, you, you're, you're helping people. That is, that's what you do. That is a service position, but she's also a strong red because she's like in nursing, I can make a lot of money. I can work, you know, four twelves and make the money, but her dominant color is probably yellow, but red is right behind there because you, if you do not like people, you are not doing nursing. I don't care how much it pays. Anybody else? Uh, Ebony said they are risk takers. Yep. Show them the money and they are all in. Exactly. All right. So we are all, again, we're all rainbow. We all have these different colors in us, um, but we do have a dominant color. And so in order to do a proper edification, you need to know these characteristics of the colors because when you're doing an edification, we include all of the colors as part of the edification. And so I'm gonna give you what you say in the edification that is going to speak to the person that's a red, a yellow, a green, or a blue. And once you get this, you're gonna be like, ah, I can edify anybody and everybody, all right? So loves to help people. And actually, let me share my screen. Edifying as simple as one, two, three. Okay, so let's start with the documentation. Red, right? So notice we have red, yellow, blue, and green. Because in your edification, you need to tap into this because we don't know what color your prospect is, right? So we wanna make sure that as part of the edification, we include the aspects and the characteristics of red, yellow, blue, and green, because we do not know what color your prospect is. So the documentation, is, is, is your expert a one-star director, a goal builder, a two-star director, or a three-star director? Are they a, a 2020 um, club member? Are they in the top income earners? It's their documentation, right? Show that, that, that they're making the money. If they're a goal builder, you know, they're a gold builder. They reach the top of the um, um, builders program, right? They're a six-figure income earner, right? They wear the sapphire ring, signifying earnings of $100,000 annually in residual income, right? But you got to show the red that this person is documented, they have accomplished something. They have, and if they've documented, basically means they're making money. They're making money. If you're not documented to a red, you're not making any money. So acknowledging that person's documentation to show that they're making money is important as to include as part of the edification. Okay. So when you say, um, uh, you know, let's let's say you're um, edifying Director White, two star director, right? Has a team of over three hundred people, top one percent income earner in the company. You are speaking to the person that's a red, okay? Your yellows. All you got to say is loves to help people. That's it. Loves to help people. So if your prospect is a yellow, they're going to feel comfortable talking to your expert because they're going to be like, oh, they love to help people. And so do I. Right? Your blues, you're going to say they love to have fun. Your expert loves to have fun. Because if your prospect is a blue, they're like, oh, they like to have fun. I like to have fun too. Cool. Looking forward to talking to this person. And then for the greens, we just say knows 100% of the facts about this opportunity. 
right? So their documentation, meaning their title, you know, what they have accomplished, whether they're a goal holder. Yes. Somebody had a question? All right, make sure you are muted if you are not speaking, please. Documentation, showing that they have made money in this company. Again, if they're a gold builder, so-and-so has reached the top of our builders program, poised in position to earn a substantial residual income, right? One-star director, top 1% 1 of the company as, you know, leading an organization of over 100 people, right? Two-star director, again, top 1% of the company, leading an organization of, you know, over 300 people, poised in position uh, to earn a substantial residual income, right? They love to help people. They love to have fun. They know 100% of the facts about this opportunity. Master and memorize this. Master and memorize this. Some of you are getting on these three-way calls and you're doing the edification and you are just all over the place. You're just rambling about stuff that doesn't even matter to your prospect. If you're edifying me, there's so many things you don't need to say. Okay, I got dimples. Oh, she's fun. To it's just so much, it's, it's not about me as a person. It's about what have I accomplished in the business? Some of the extra stuff y'all bringing in, oh, she was able to, you know, build a house and the, you don't need to do all that. Keep it simple because you need your downline to be able to duplicate the edification. And so if you're rambling on and on and on and on about all these different things, how is your downline going to duplicate that? You want to keep it super, super simple. What is their rank? And you might give a little detail so that the, um, the prospect understands. Because if you just say gold builder and you don't break down what that is, your prospect has no clue what a gold builder is, <laughs> right? So if you say gold builder, just say they reached the top of our um, builders program and they're now poised in position to earn a substantial residual income because that's what it is right you can't just say one star director they don't know what that is you just say you know that means they're leading a team of a minimum of 500 people they're in the top one percent income earners in a company All right so you give their ranking and a, and a brief description of what that is and then you just follow it up with Loves to help people, loves to have fun, knows 100% of the facts about the opportunity. Every single thing that they've done and accomplished, you don't need to go in that because that's probably going to be part of their story that they share. And, and based on what your prospect is saying, they'll let them know what's relevant. You know, they're going to share what's relevant. Now, getting back to just giving an example. So y'all take a picture of this if you need to. Let's look at how this would look. Kim, I'd like to introduce you to Director Burke or Mrs. Burke. Do not address the expert by their first name. Make a note of that. Do not address your expert by their first name. You either introduce them as director so-and-so or Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so, okay? Do not address the expert by their first name. Now, when it comes to your prospect, do address them by their first name because on that three-way call, your prospect, they're not important. They're not the important person on the call. I don't care if they're a doctor, a surgeon, an attorney, it don't, they're nobody on that call. We're having a planet marketing conversation. And so what they have accomplished in their life is irrelevant. They haven't done anything over here. So remember, you're edifying the expert, never edify the prospect. Because what they've done doesn't matter. And not only that, some, some of you, 
when you're doing the, the edification, you go on and on and on about what the prospect has done. Oh, they're this, they're that. They're th no, stop doing that. Because the expert is going to have a conversation with your prospect and asking them to share, well, who are you? Tell me why you're looking at this opportunity. That's going to be part of the three-way call is the expert getting to know your prospect. So you don't want to you know, spill all the beans during the edification well, because now you're taken away from what the expert's role is to do. Now, before the call, before you call your expert, whatever information you do know about your prospect, share that with them. Whether it's right before you merge the call or maybe 15 minutes before the call, you may text your expert and say, hey, just wanted to give you some information about our call in the next 15 minutes. Um, my prospect, blah, 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 single mom, single dad, you know, retired military, whatever. You can give some detail there. But as part of the introduction, you, that's not the place to do that. Director White, you want to share some insight on this? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so yes, I, I was driving, but I'm glad I didn't type because I was thinking the same thing as the way the training was going in regards to um, the prospect and the expert story and not telling too much. So you definitely want to make sure that you let your expert know exactly who your prospect is if you have any information. And if you've already found out from them, what did they like best about the opportunity? I would say that is something to definitely share with the expert as well. So we can already kind of know how to frame the call, right? Because if you're telling us somebody loves to travel, then I know on this call, we're going to be talking about travel, you know, and how this opportunity has afforded me to travel 22 times a year. You know, if your expert is someone that loves to help people, right, then I might talk about how this opportunity afforded me the chance to start a public safety company where I'm able to help my community. Um, if the person is a red, you know, money motivated um, and about documentation, then I can talk about, you know, um, other mentors also that we are attached to, right? We're in the lineage of the number three income earner who's a millionaire and a millionaire maker. Um, so that is going to be very important. And um, um, I think this training right now is very responsible because sometimes even for ourselves as directors, it's like, wow, I need to go back to the basics. <laughs> <laughs> so um I'm, I'm happy that we're doing this training um today and definitely um even like director burke was stating in regards to addressing the director as director or using the last name right that is a form of edification as well for your prospect so the, they can kind of understand how this goes, because I remember when we first started, I'll be honest with you all, I was like, why are we calling everybody directors and addressing them by their last name? Like what's going on? But as I learned the business, you know, especially directorship, y'all, it's to get a team of a hundred, it's not easy. So us as directors, you know, we, we may make it look easy, you all, but it's not easy. Most of us have not um, led teams of hundreds and thousands. And so you definitely want to give the person their respect and acknowledgement of what they have been able to achieve in this industry. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much, Director Wright, for sharing that. Ms. Sharice? I just um, wanted to ask, I know this is regarding three ways, but when you're doing the presentation and it's more than um two that's hosting do you replicate the same information yes absolutely absolutely and 
I would highly recommend you plugging into the corporate presentation that's done on the Planet Marketing Facebook page on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. And you can see how they edify. You know, the person sometimes is going to be the person who opens it up that edifies the first speaker, right? But then when the first speaker finishes it and they hand it off to the person who's doing the back end, which is the comp, that person is going to also. Um, you know, edify the person who did the front end, the travel. So it kind of depends if there's two people or three people, um, but it's always a back and forth. And even when you are introducing, let's say on a three-way call, you're introducing um, your prospect to your expert. When the expert comes on, they're going to come back and edify you. They're going to throw it back to you. You know, oh, you know, um, Thank you, Ms. Zara, for that wonderful introduction. I didn't hear you say anything about yourself, but I want you to know, you know, Zara is a mover and a shaker in our organization. You know, she made the decision to position herself on the money-making side of the travel industry. And so she's in the process of, you know, really helping a lot of people um, get started in the business. Right? Off the top of my head, I don't know if Zara is a bronze, silver, gold. I, I don't know. I don't know. But see, I was able to edify her, even though I don't know that. Just saying that she made a decision to start the business is edifying her. Just, just sharing that she's helping a lot of people who need help is edifying her. So you don't have to even know anything about the person to be able to edify them. The fact that they said yes to this opportunity is an edification. The fact that they're sharing this business with people who can really benefit from it is giving an edification. Kim? So I have a question about um, the three ways. So if we know that our prospect is 100% agreeing, do we need to still go through and say all of the, the things that hit each color or do we just hit that yes. one thing? Absolutely. 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 You always say all four of them. Loves to help people, loves to have fun, knows 100% of the facts about the opportunity, as well as the person's um, rank, their documentation. And Kim, you just want to share with your expert before the call, hey, I know this person is agreeing, <laughs> right? So that they, they, they know how to frame the conversation. They know certain things are going to hit. Any other questions about this? And let me go back to, again, Rochelle, I'll hit you once. Go ahead, Rochelle. Okay, I had a quick question. You said you don't really have to know the prospect where they work and stuff like that? No, I was saying you don't have to know your business partner's information in order to be able to um, edify them. Okay, because usually I, I um, when I talk to the expert, I tell them um, what they do. That's good. Well. Yeah. Okay. Any, any information you have, Rochelle, about the prospect, you want to share that with the expert privately so that they have, you know, some information that can help them um, facilitate the call. Okay. So you so this is, because I usually don't do it privately. I've been telling her. By phone, but okay. I gotta keep a note on that. Say that again. I usually never said it privately. My first time hearing about saying it privately. I usually um, keep the prospect on hold, and then I tell the expert what they do as far as work. Yeah, that's perfect. That's right. Okay. You're doing it right, mm -hmm. Director White. Um, I just wanted to add. Uh, a way that I get to know my prospect, because I know a lot of us are meeting people um, probably on social media outside of our warm market. I use the form method um, to gather information. Let's say even if I connect with someone, you know, I didn't have time to maybe do an intro call with them and they just got on the Zoom and now I'm doing my three-way um, before I get my expert on the line, I use the form method and I pretty much um, just ask them about their family life, occupation, what they like to do for fun, 
and motivation, um, you know, what is driving them or what has them looking at this opportunity. So uh, FORM is an acronym for Family, Occupation, Recreation, and Motivation. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Yep. So here's an example of um, how you could edify me. Kim, I'd like to introduce you to Director Burke or Mrs. Burke. Mrs. Burke is a three-star director and six-figure income earner with Planet Marketing. She loves to help people. She loves to have fun. And she knows 100% of the facts about this opportunity. And Director Burke, this is Kim. That's it. This is Kim. Not, oh, Kim is this, Kim is that, Kim is a mom. She's at that. Nope. This is Kim. And then mute your line. Write that down in caps, underline it and highlight it. Mute your line. We don't want to hear you laughing in the background about the jokes that we make. We don't want to hear the pots and pans rattling. We don't want you interjecting into the conversation. Oh, Director Burt, tell her about the, um, the fam trips because she loves to travel. I'm telling you, if you interrupt the call, you're going to hear the dial tone because the expert will hang up and let you take over the call because clearly you don't need us if you got so much to say. You don't need us. Don't come off a of mute and say, oh, oh, Director Burke, can I, can I just add in one thing? Can I, can I just piggyback off of what you just said? No, you may not. Director White, I just wanted to share, um, you know, Kim, blah, 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 you know, used to also be a travel advisor, but she was with an, don't do that. Spare us your, your brilliance, please. If you had something that we, the expert, needed to know, you should have told us before the call. Well, Director Wright, I just wanted to also let you know that, um, you know, Kim is, um, you know, her husband just lost his job. So, you know, this could really help. Don't do that. Once you introduce, make the introduction, mute your line and do not come off a of mute until the expert invites you back into the call. Period. So many people are messing this up and you are just messing up the three-way call. The expert is going to close your person. There's one of three things that's going to happen by the end of the call once the expert does what they do. They're either going to sign your person up. That person's either going to sign up right then and there. So be ready. Be ready with the sign up instructions. Be ready with your link to send the prospect. One of the most annoying things for me is I do a three way call, the person's ready to sign up, and the new business partner has no idea where their link is, how to send it. Like, Director White, can you speak on that? I know you've experienced that. <laughs> I was about to say, or a, a senior business partner plan and marketing account is canceled and they didn't even know it. <laughs> what? what? That oh my too. goodness. <laughs> yes, yes. So yes, be prepared. You are once you made a decision that you're going to start to share this business with um, other individuals and begin to grow a team, start to be a good steward of your planet marketing business and know your information. Be ready with that link, you know, because a lot of times um, people are ready to go in that moment. And if there's any hesitation or um, anything like could take that prospect from a yes to a no, right? Because most times people are, fresh off the webinar um, or looking at the information, they're excited. So they are making 
that decision to get started in that moment based off of emotion, right? Even think about it like at church. Um, For my church, I know we used to um, do the offering at the beginning of service. Director Candence um, pointed out to me, she said, do you notice we take offering now at the end of service? right? Because we got in the word, we fed, you know, coming out the spirit, high off emotions. And guess what? I'll give my last when I'm coming out the spirit. You, here you go, Jesus, take it out, right? So <laughs> be yeah. ready with your information um, so we can go ahead and close out that sale for you. Absolutely. Director Short, you want to add to that? Okay, so again, everyone, as Director White shared, make sure your planet marketing side is active. There is nothing more embarrassing than you having a prospect who's ready to sign up only for you to realize you're not active. Or you don't know your link or how to send your link. That's part of doing business. We're here to make money and you don't even know how the first step of what you need to do to make when someone's ready to give you the money, you don't know what to do. So please make sure you know how, uh, what your link is. Um, you can send it right from the mobile app if you have the person in your leads section already added there. Or you maybe you have the link you know, saved in, in a note section of your phone. But you better have that link ready to go. Have it ready to go. Very, very important. And the sign up instructions. I think I always give uh, the prospect that's signing up, I send them the sign up instructions. Why? Because I let them know when you enroll your first person, I want you to be able to send this to them. Everything I send to you, I want you to be able to send to your first business partner. So now they have this step by step. Beverly? Oh, thank you for those instructions. I had a business partner. um, I had shared the instructions with her and also with the the password, you have to have a special character and then the uh, ID you can, for the planet side and the ID, you cannot have a special character. And so I had sent those instructions to her so that she can share that with her um, you know, people as she enrolled them and she, I, I don't know what happened, but um, that delayed the person being signed up and eventually the person just didn't sign up at all because they got confused, they got frustrated with it. So having the instructions and understanding the, the nuances around the password and the ID is real important. Thank you for sharing that, which leads me to this. Y'all write this down if you're taking notes. Walk the prospect through the sign-up. You're supposed to be on the line walking them through it. Do not just send someone your link and say, you know, sign up and let me know once you're done and you hang up the phone. And now you just sit and wait and you keep checking your phone, checking your phone. Oh, they didn't sign up yet. They didn't sign up yet. What? I don't know where that came from. Someone says, oh, I'm ready to sign up. And you just send them the link and hope that they do it. I don't know where that came from because y'all didn't learn that from me. You should be walking your prospect through the sign up. So that when they get to certain areas, you can give them some additional instruction. I always tell them, okay, click on this. Make sure you select 2095. Do you see the 2095? Because I don't want somebody signing up and not getting the mobile app. You don't sign up with Tanisha Burt and you don't get the mobile app. It's not, I don't even make it an option for you to choose just the 1995. I'm telling you, select the 2095 because you need the mobile app to be able to work the business from your phone. But if I just sent them the link, they'll probably just select the 1995. And then I say, let me know when you get to the part that says username. 
I'm guiding them through it. So when we get to the username, guess what I tell them? Just use your first and last name, all lowercase, no spaces. Don't make it something crazy. Because when you go to enroll someone, it's going to ask them, what is your sponsor's username? So you don't want it to be something crazy and difficult. Just make it your first and last name, no spaces, all lowercase. Give them some direction. Coach, you're supposed to be coaching them through it. We don't tell people, go do it. We say, let's go do it, meaning I'm going to do it with you. And then when we get to the username, I tell them, just like um, Beverly just said, you need to have an uppercase, a lowercase, a number, and a symbol. And here's the other thing I tell them, write it down. This is your planet marketing username and password. I need you to write it down. And when they tell you, oh, I know what it is. I use the same thing for everything. Say, no, 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 no. You don't understand. In this industry, you're going to have a ton of usernames and passwords, especially on the travel side. And some of the suppliers make you change it every six months. I need you to write it down. And you need to have some type of system to track all of your usernames and passwords because you're going to have a ton of them. And for me, y'all, this is just me. This is just a little something for the people I'm enrolling that are direct to me. I say, listen, my biggest pet peeve is when it comes to training and you don't know your username and password. So I'm telling you now, I need you to write it down and know where you put it. This is just the extra stuff that I'm sharing because I'm already starting the coaching process. They don't know what they don't know. Just like many of us, we use the same password for everything. So we're like, yeah, yeah, I know it. But you know they make you change it. So you're just going to let them not write it down? We got to do better as coaches. Uh, Director White said, if they're using an iPhone, have them download Google Chrome because Safari will give an error message for the ITA. Good information. If they're using their iPhone to enroll, have them use the browser Google Chrome for the enrollment process to avoid getting the error message. Thank you for that because I cannot figure out why my person was having such a problem and I was getting frustrated. I needed to know that. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, so if you've been just sending people a link and having your fingers and toes crossed that they're gonna sign up, stop doing that. You should be walking them through the process step by step by step. I mean, think about it, this is your money. Don't you wanna ensure you get your $50? Or are you just gonna leave it up to a wing and a prayer? Come on, y'all, let's do business. How are we gonna tell people you in business for yourself but not by yourself. And the very first thing is you leave them by themselves to sign up. We gotta do better. Was this helpful? Any questions first? Any questions from anyone? And let me go to uh, Miss Karen. You have a question. Karen, you're on mute if you're talking. Karen, I see your hand up. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Let me go to Team Lux Platinum. Delta, I have a question. Yes. On the um, on colors, how with all the colors that we spoke of, are there any additional colors with the, oh, so the colors that, that we spoke of today, that that is it? Yes. That's all you need to focus on. Anything more than that, now you're getting into psychology and that's not what we get for. <laughs> we want right. to keep it simple, Ms. Delta. We want to keep it simple. Just what you need to do to get the job done. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other Okay. Questions? All I right, there we go, Karen. I'm so sorry. I'm driving and I don't do this phone thing on Zoom. It is so foreign to me to do Zoom on phone. It's and okay. I do it when I'm driving. So I, I wanted to take you back on the question you just asked about the phone. And like I said, I don't do the phone thing. And I just personally don't like signing people up on their phone because you can't see everything. So do you, you recommend that? I heard it say something about do the Chrome with the phone, but I'm like, 
you can't even do this. You can't even set them up. And, and maybe I'm doing too much. Well, you uh, shouldn't like, be signing them up. Let's start with that. No, no, they're no, signing up. So if they choose right. to sign up on their phone, that's on them. You're right. I'm not signing up, but I do do it with them. And when yeah. they say, okay, yeah. I'm going to get my phone, I say, no, get your laptop or your desktop. Am I telling them wrong? Because I just, it's nice. just that I don't feel comfortable on the phone because I can't guide them through because they don't see what I see. And, and it's not everything. And you can't even do your, set up your, your travel site on your phone. They won't even let you. And, and I don't you know. Can. No, you can. You can. It's up to so them, Karen. Let me say this. Let me say this, Karen. What okay. your your hangups about the phone are your hangups. Whereas True. the person that you're enrolling, they may do everything from their phone and they know it like the back of their hand. So what you got to do is just know that the steps are no different, whether you're on a phone, a tablet, or a laptop or a desktop. The only difference is how much you can see on the screen. So sometimes there have been times when I've been walking someone through the sign up on their phone, I tell them, turn it horizontal. Mm. But sometimes they can't see the enter button or the save button or something like that. But if they turn it horizontal, now it looks more as it would on a tablet or a laptop or something like that. But don't put your hangups on other people. Because when you're dealing with that Generation Z and then millennials, they do everything from their phone. And then when they get to a laptop, they're like kind of lost because they're so used to doing everything from their phone. Thank so you, you for that information. Okay. You're right. I got it. I got it. This baby boomer got to get it together. Okay. <laughs> Just <laughs> here's the My thing. Great say, oh, go ahead. Here's the thing, Karen. That's why you want to have the sign up instructions because whether you're on a phone, tablet, um, laptop, or, or desktop, the instructions are the exact same. So as long as you know what the instructions are, whatever, however they're using, whatever um, device they're using, it doesn't matter. You just need to know what the process is. It doesn't change because of the device that they're using. Gotcha. Well, that's I was me about turning it on the side i think that's going to be the key because that's what they tell me when they do it on their phone well i don't see that i don't see what you're telling me to do i know the process i know it like the back of my hand yes so when they get on their phone and tell me they don't see it i'm thinking well maybe it don't show it on the phone because i don't do the phone you know right. i thank you for telling me to turn it horizontal okay that's probably the key to the whole the whole yes. mishap right there yes and have them turn it horizontal it, first century you can get, get <laughs> off that laptop because everybody do it on their phone my grandkids yes. keep telling me they keep telling me. <laughs> yeah and i'll tell you even me now i'm generation x i use my phone for everything i i can do anything i need to do on facebook from my phone but when i get on my desktop to get on facebook i'm almost lost i'm like what is the darn settings what is the privacy thing what can i find I'm almost lost. I am lost. I ain't going to say I, I'm lost on yes. my desktop yes. on Facebook because it's yes. so much more user friendly on the phone. And that's what yes. I'm on all day. So we got to um, just just for us, we, we, we need to let's not keep ourselves in the box. So guess what? Now right. I try to do more on Facebook from my desktop because I'm always wasting too much time looking for certain things. So I need to re-familiarize myself um, with using the desktop, the laptop, the phone, or whatever, you know. And again, because we're going to be coaching people, we want to be be able to have some information that can truly guide them um, through the business, right? And let's not forget YouTube University, ladies, gentlemen, YouTube University, whatever you don't know, go find a YouTube video to show you how to do it. <laughs> All right. Um, and let me just check uh, in Team Lux Platinum. Any questions? Let's see. Lynette said, I had three clients wanted to sign up. Not sure if they didn't want to pay the monthly fee. Well, Lynette, if you get them on a three-way call with a senior business partner who can show them the value of this business and cast a bigger vision, uh, the $65 a month is not a problem. Money is on, or price 
where money is only an issue in the absence of value. Write that down. Money price is only an issue in the absence of value. Because I promise you, when people understand that they can make eight streams of income with just a $200 opportunity, you think they're thinking about the 60 bucks a month? Is that even an issue? If I can make eight streams of income, if I have a desire to make $5,000 a month, and you telling me in this business I can do that, and is $60 an issue when most people blow that with two, taking two people out for lunch? Yeah. Right? So price is only the issue in the absence of value. It just means that person, who, whatever information they got, Lynette, from whomever they got it from, did not do a good job of showing the value or meeting the need of that person. Because if that person had a need, let's say they're working two jobs, right? They don't want to work two jobs. Two jobs are for two people. And you're saying, I have an opportunity that can help you quit that second job so you can make money from home. You think they're going to have an issue with 60 bucks a month? And you showing them how to get out of a second job, get more time, spend less gas, less wear and tear on their car. Price is only a problem in the absence of value. So I hope that helped you, uh, Lynette. Okay, good. Any other questions before we go? All right. Well, that concludes virtual coffee break today. I hope everyone found value. Take the notes and bring them to life. And please, please, please share this video with your downline so that they can do a proper edification. So everyone have an amazing day and I'll see you next week. Bye.